Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to go over UFC Louisville from a betting perspective. And again, for those of you that are here for the first time, we take a very contrarian approach to this because, listen, when it comes to sports betting, whether it's MMA or, or any other sport, it's, it's really hard to claim that you have an edge over a very liquid line. Um, it's just very, very difficult. And I, going back a long, long ways, um, feel that if you just kind of just grind and just think that you're better than the line, it's it's a very difficult way to go about sports betting. Now, again, sports betting is supposed to be fun. So I'm not going to begrudge you, you know, whatever your process is to have fun doing it. Okay. But in the long run, you know, most of these sports that most people bet on, it's very, very difficult to beat. Uh, let's, I, I can't say that's impossible, right? That that's, that's even, I guess, even more egotistical, right? To say that nobody can beat it. Um, but it's just difficult. But but what you can do is, I think, is at least get a sense for which part of a line or which part of a side or which prop is being generated by way too much public speak and which is generated by way too much narrative. And as a result, what we like to do is figure out what those things are and fade them. With the idea being that if you could even find one thing that's overvalued, then sort of by definition everything else is undervalued now again is it undervalued enough to make up for the vig maybe <laughs> probably not but but if you could eliminate a couple of things that you think are overvalued and then you could also eliminate some things that just have no chance to win i think that you can get ahead of the curve a little bit right and again we're we're doing this for fun on the one hand but on the other hand it, it's i think a good lesson in how to handicap markets in general, um, whether it be MMA prop markets or sports betting markets, or particularly um, the stock market, um, where you could find a stock, for example, that just looks so perfect, you know, uh, leader in their space, good balance sheet, all the analysts love it. And sort of by definition, those stocks are probably overvalued because so much of all of that is already priced into the stock and then some. So it's it's a similar concept, which applies to sports betting. And, and what I found is that MMA is, is particularly suited to this type of analysis because, again, I haven't been doing it for too long, just a couple of years, but I found that the way – you know, Twitter, uh, MMA Twitter and MMA betting and every the whole community is kind of just kind of like analyze these things. They always end up at the very at the very most settling on a very binary outcome, meaning that either a fighter is going to win if this happens and in this manner or B is going to win if this happens and in this manner. So they kind of resort to very, very, a very few uh, uh, outcomes um, and forget that MMA and UFC is 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 very very chaotic, and so as a result, the the kind of chalky and I don't say chalky because that implies the the biggest favor, but I don't mean that. I mean the 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 prop and the method of victory that is just so agreed upon by everybody is probably by definition going to be overvalued. So uh, what's what's cool is that is that why I'm not an expert at data analysis as far as the MMA and May streets are concerned I do consider myself sort of an expert on gauging psychology and following um and following public perceptions and uh it's been very successful it's very very successful exercise since I started doing this stuff so uh that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go through the fights and I'm gonna try to analyze which sides and which props are the most agreed upon ones, and then we could probably end up fading them. Now, again, we do have to come up with something that's reasonable, so I do have some some knowledge of the fights, honestly. But um, I think that's where we, we're supposed to start. The other thing I would mention, I'm going to go over the rules here. I do bet every single thing that I, I don't want to say recommend or whatever, that, that I discuss here. Um, and I just think that's healthy. And, and let's just go over the rules. We're going to bet one thing every single fight. And that's not the best money management system in the world, but but I don't care. Uh, second of all, we're going to be betting one unit on every fight. And for me, one unit is specifically $180, 10 times high for us. Uh, and that's not the best money management system in the world either, but we don't care. That's not what this video and video series is about. Um, it's not about MMA. It's not really about making money, if that's kind of a weird thing to say. 
but it's about how to analyze and how to think about markets. So we're just going to fire something every, every, every fight, one unit each. And the other thing, which kind of makes this thing cool or fun is that we always presume for, for phil phil or philosophical purposes that we're going to lose every single fight until the main event. So in the main event, we are going to be betting something by definition that is going to get all of our money back. Um, so we sort of have to reverse engineer um, who we're going to pick in that based on the fact that we're going to need to get a 14 to one shot because there are 14 fights. We're going to presume that we lose 13 fights. And so the last one, we're going to do 14 to one. So you're going to have action if you tail this stuff along the way. Um, and I can't promise you everything I, I come up with is going to be really good EV, but I certainly promise that it's not going to be the popular side. And if you accept my, my initial principle that whatever is the most popular and agreed upon that looks just so easy is probably what's most overvalued. You're probably at worst, I think, going to be at break even. And more to the point, it's going to teach you a method of, of thinking about things that I think translates into other disciplines. All right, so let's just get started. Um, Ray Ann Dos Santos, uh, Puha Tumar. So I should actually have said one other thing. The reason why we put out this video late or like Friday instead of earlier in the week, is that I need to see where the public's going. And, and the longer I wait, the better. Now, again, this is in contrast to the way most sharp uh, MMA handicappers operate. They usually try to get in early because they have a good sense of where the market is going to go. Um, I'm not that good, but what I am good at is knowing where the market is. So um, I try to wait as long as possible for my purposes. And so that's why we wait all the way till Friday. All right, so... Rayon de Santos, Puja Tumar. So this is kind of the very settled on, this is a very easy fight to, to break down, which is the things that we like, okay? Because if it's that easy to break down, we're, we have something to fade. So Puja Tumar is a very, very short Indian fighter um, who is marketing herself as, I guess, the first female Indian fighter, I guess. Um, and she's facing Rayon de Santos, and we have what the, the MMA community calls a very stark clash of styles here. You have Rando Santos, who is extremely aggressive with her grappling, and Pua Tumar, who, for whatever her skill set is, her main weakness is her defense of grappling. So, as they like to say in all of the Twitter sphere, styles make fights. So, you know, Puha really just has it, her head, you know, uh, Rayanne really has Puha over a barrel here. Uh, it's just a question of whether she finishes or whether she she wins by decision. But the, the style is just too egregious to, you know, for Puhar to be competitive. So we're going to try it. Puha Tumar plus the 270 for 180. Now, again, normally, and not normally, but sometimes we, uh, I would say half the, half the bets, maybe more are going to be prop bets. But here, there's not a real consensus of how this right's going to finish. All there is a huge consensus on is that Dos Santos is kind of a lock. So we are going to take Puha plus the 270 for 180. And we are going to try to put these in now at the end of the uh, the video. But sometimes Zoom kind of hates us and doesn't like when we're trying to – or actually, Zoom doesn't hate us. Uh, DraftKings hates Zoom. So um, I might have to wait until I log off. Anyway, uh, next fight, we have Taylor Lapalus versus Cody Stamen. So this one is – again, this is a, this is a fight where – you know, I've heard some kind, some some arguments for Stamen because he does have a wrestling background, although he hasn't really put it to use recently. And I have heard some takes for Taylor Lapalus, but the one thing I've heard the most of for this fight is that we don't know necessarily who's going to win, but but what we do know is that it's going to be an extremely boring fight. The Lapalus is low volume; he's very deliberate, and Cody Stamen is not finishing anybody. So as a result, what we're going to do is we're going to bet that fight inside the distance. So Stamen Lapidus to finish inside the distance. Let's see, a uh, popular method. Let's see, where where is that? Fight lines. Finish only, no. Winning method, no. Fight prop. Fight to go the distance, no. Plus the 245. Now, this is usually not something we like to do because because most fights, I mean, excuse me, most lines are sort of juiced to, you know, for people wanting it to finish. But when you get the public really intense intent on one thing that could happen, it kind of goes all the way the opposite, uh, 
all the way to the other side. So we're going to fight. We're going to bet the fight does not go the distance plus the 245. All right. Uh, now, Eduardo Mora versus Denise Gomes. So, again, uh, this fight has been analyzed pretty heavily, and, and you are getting some love for both sides. So uh, Mora is very, very aggressive with her grappling as well. But Denise Gomes is really, really tough. So Denise Gomes has had some flash KOs, I think two of them, before her recent loss to Angela Hill. So I'm actually seeing some love for Gomes. And what people are pretty sure about is that if Gomes wins, she's going to kind of get a KO here. Um, uh, or if if Mora wins, again, it's going to be probably takedowns and, and things like that and, and ground and pound. But I think that people are really overestimating the, the finishing upside in this fight. Everybody's pretty sure that, that, that one of those two things is going to happen. Either Gomes is going to get that KO or maybe or or or, uh, or Mora is going to be all over her getting all these takedowns. So one thing that we're not really seeing too much are these fighters, one of them winning by decision. The only fighter you are getting some steam for winning by decision is Mora because if in fact she can get those takedowns, she's going to, you know, presumably kind of control the fight and maybe listen, women's MMA is tough. I mean, they they don't really finish all too often. So what we have to do is be the most contrarian here, and we are going to actually play Gomes by decision. Let's pull this up. Let's see what that is. Uh, stats, fight lines. Where So we don't have any, you don't have anything with Gomes except for, for that fight, except for, well, that's odd. Well, we're going to wait on that one, but but when this comes out, whatever that whatever that is, you know, Gomes by decision. Uh, that's what we're going to play now. First, so I can't put anything in right now, but I promise you that's going to be the bet. Gomes by decision. It's going to be plus, you know, quite a bit. Let's put it that way. All right. Uh, moving on, we have John Castaneda versus, uh, uh, what you call it against uh, Daniel Marcos. Boy, are we not getting any of these? Boy, they're missing a whole bunch of these props. That's that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad by DraftKings. Nonetheless, uh, this one I kind of am confident on anyway. So you have John Castaneda versus Daniel Marcos, and and, and you have <laughs> this is one of those one of those weird biases, which uh, it, it it happens in a lot of sports. So you have Daniel Marcos, who's eighteen and zero or something like that, and he's facing John Castaneda, and and people, it's weird in MMA. You would think that that they would have more respect for the eighteen and zero and the big, you know, the big record like that, but it actually works the opposite way from what I've seen. What I've seen is that people are very suspicious of these big eighteen and zero records, and they look to fade them. You know, and, and for example, I hear in this particular fight. Like this is almost a pick 'em, and you're getting Marcos at eighteen you know, at 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 with an eighteen and zero record, and I think one of the reasons for that is because people are looking at one particular fight, um, in, in Daniel Marcos's career that they're really holding against him, and that's going to be um, and that's going to be his fight against Davy Grant. So I am going to be sort of contrarian with this take, and I am going to put Daniel Marcos um minus the one twenty. And again, even though it's only minus one twenty, doesn't mean it's not contrarian. Um, actually we're going to, we are going to end up staking all singles. So we'll put that in over here, but it's really odd that they don't have these props out on Friday. Um, anyway, uh, I, I don't can't, I can't imagine any prop that I want to play here anyway. So I'm going to go, I am going to go with Marcos minus the 120. You know what I want to do? Let me pull up fight odds. Cause I think that'll give us an idea at least of what we are going to be getting for some of these. Let's say DraftKings isn't putting it out yet. So going back to that example that that gomes fight so gomes by decision is looking like plus about 340 or plus 300 so that's what we're gonna end up getting on her um let me just take a look at these castaneda props i can't imagine any of them being playable no one's really talked too much about how this fight's gonna go just the fact that it's sexy mexi and it's john castaneda and marcos has lost uh, not lost his fight against davy grant was kind of telling so we're gonna take a shot and we're gonna kind of be contrarian by taking the one you know the minus 120 favorite if that makes any sense 
All right. Um, Brad Katona versus Jesse Butler. So there's really only two things that you can do in this fight. And I thought about what I wanted to do, and I, I think I'm pretty set on it. So what people are, are agreeing on is that, number one, Jesse Butler is not UFC material. Right? He's terrible. Um, and he came in and fought J uh, Jim Miller and got starched in 38 seconds. The other thing that people are 100% sure about is Brad Katona is not that great. You know, he, he's only a minus 700 favorite because he's against Jesse Butler. Um, they they have no confidence in him that he that he can finish anybody. So everybody's pretty sure what's going to happen here, and that's going to be Brad Katona. Pro maybe he gets like a late KO or something, but more more likely he gets a a kind of a a, mid, a middling type of decision over a terrible fighter. So that's what you can't bet. Okay, what the only two things you can really bet here to get contrarian is you can play Brad Katona in, say, like round one, okay? Or if you're really saucy, you could just play Jesse Butler plus 500, okay? Um, and my, I could make the argument that, you know, Jesse Butler came into his fight against Jim Miller on short notice, and he was up like two weight classes, I think. I mean, he, he could actually be bigger than Katona here. And at plus 500, I mean, I, mean, I don't know. So, so I'm going to either play Jesse Butler plus the 500 or Katona round one, depending on what's, what's bigger. So let's, we're going to take a look at Katona round one. If Katona round one is bigger than Butler, we'll play him. Otherwise we're going to play Butler plus 500. Let's see. Uh, all right. Katona. Let's see. Round props. Katona round one. Oh, it's close to plus 450. Wow. Um. All right. Well, you know what? We'll be. Will be true, and we will just play Jesse Butler plus the five hundred for one eighty. Huh. Um, boy, is 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 that contrarian though? I mean, it's such a big line. Don't you think people are gonna take the shot at this? I don't know. It's. I think they're both gonna be okay. Butler plus is anybody really doing this? Like taking Butler plus 500? I haven't seen anybody recommend it, even though it's plus 500. So we're going to try it. Jesse Butler plus 500 for the 180. Andrew Lee versus Montella, Montana De La Rosa. So we have two sort of middling female fighters. And one thing that everybody's in agreement with is that this fight's going to be awful. And, and boring, and it's going to be the one that everybody's just kind of, you know, going to go to the bathroom, get some drinks or whatever, and not really pay too much attention to. The only other thing I would say is that it has been discussed that Montana, Montana De La Rosa is maybe has some grappling upside, I guess. So what I like to do in situations like that is, uh, is one of two things. Number one, ignore it. Or number two, play the other side by submission. Just because, again, if one guy, one fighter is going to go for a bunch of takedowns, it does provide the opportunity for the other fighter to get submissions. Um, so we are going to try that. So Andrew Lee, plus by submission, plus 750 for 180. Okay, Carlos Prates versus Charles Radke. So we have Carlos Prates, who is... Coming off a very, you know, I, I'd like to say disappointing uh, KO win, I guess, over Trevin Giles. He was getting beat as a big favorite, and he did, didn't, I think he did get the late second round KO. Um, but there's a little bit of hate uh, as far as the way that fight went. Um, and on the other hand, you have Charles Radke, who just was just awesome in his last fight. He, um, he ended up, uh, whatchamacallit, he ended up uh, just destroying Gilbert Urbina. I mean, he Urbina was 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 backpedaling around the ring. He was completely afraid. And Racky just went after him, knocked him down twice, and, and that was all she wrote, okay? And yet, you have Protest is a minus 230 favorite. So, first of all, I, I, I was expecting there to be a lot more love on the Racky side, 
but it's weird. Like, I don't know what it is, but in, in, in the MMA community, this is what you're hearing. Yeah, I know that that Protest didn't look so good, but, you know, Radke is very hittable and, and Protest is going to keep him in range. And nobody really at the end of the day is actually taking the Radke side. Okay. Um, so we are going to do something with the Radke side. And, and the question is whether we just want to play him to win or if we want to play him in some other way. I think that I'm going to end up just playing him to win. Um, I thought about a different thing. I thought about Radke by sub because that is a that is a path to victory for him that not that many people are expecting, that being getting some takedowns and things like that. He has a wrestling base, which he doesn't use all too often. I think that might be a little bit too... Um, a little bit too fancy. So we're just going to play Radke plus the 180, 195 for 180. All right. Tiago Moises versus Ludovic Klein. Um, all right. Tiago Moises is, is a very, very strong grappler, grappler, very strong submission guy. And Ludovic Klein is a little more well-rounded, I guess. He, he's considered to have uh, you know, a little bit of an edge on the striking and he has decent grappling on his own. I have seen probably equal love for both of these fighters. Okay. So, and I have seen, I don't know, Moises probably by sub as his most likely path to victory. So I, you really can't bet Moises by sub here, honestly. And you can't really bet Moises money line. It's not really a lot of, edge there i think the only thing you can really do is probably something i don't know on the client side this is a this is a bad this is a bad fight to be contrarian because people have really come up with pretty much everything so i guess what we're going to do is we're going to play klein um Boy, this is this is an atrocious bet. I have to say. I mean, whatever the, whatever I do here is not even can be contrarian. It's totally a sucker bet. But I did say that we were going to that we were going to uh, to bet every fight. So let's just play. Let's just play Klein by decision. I guess. I mean, they, they've been they've been favoring these they've been favoring these strikers over these grapplers for a while now. So let's let's just do that. That's a terrible bet, though. Klein by decision. Oh my God, it's only plus 175. This is legitimately throwing money in the trash can. But just for the purposes of the show, we're going to put this in. All right. Um, Mikel Baeza versus Punelli Soriano. This is a rough one because you have two guys who are sort of sort of hated a little bit. I mean, they're coming off of like, one's like one and four in his last five. I think the other's one and four. Um, But... There's quite a bit of finishing upside, which has been kind of suggested in this fight. Um, Baeza I, is apparently sort of chinny. So if Soriano maybe gets a hold of him, uh, he might get the KO. That's something that people have been talking about. Baeza maybe going for takedowns. That's something maybe people have talked about. This is another one where, honestly... People have analyzed kind of to death. So I think the one outcome which has not been talked about as much as the others is probably this fight just goes the distance. So that that's, that's what we're going to do. So Baeza Soriano, fight to go the distance plus the 240 for 180. Julian Marquez versus Zach Reese. Zach Reese, killer be killed fighter. He never gets out of the first round. Julian Marquez, again, uh, he just kind of gets after it. Doesn't really have too much of a gas tank. Um, this fight probably rates to finish in the first round and a half. So there's a couple of things that you can do here. Right. No, number one is what you could do 
is just kind of bet the fight to not go the distance, excuse me, to go the distance. But I feel as though that this price is so wide that people are doing that. You know, like you could play the fight to go the distance, you get plus 400. What I'd like to do is pick one of these cats to win by decision. Um, I mean, that's like really, really nasty. So what I want to do is I just want to make sure that there's at least a chance that that happens. So let's look at Marquez's. Otherwise, we're just going to play the fight to finish. I mean, to go inside the distance. So let's say Marquez, any, any decision? Yeah, there you go. He went to a decision here. He went to a split decision with Alessio De Chirico. He went to a decision here, which he lost, whatever, but he could actually make it at least at three rounds, right? Let's see Zach Reese. He's literally never even made it out of the first round. Ugh. Yeah, we'll try it. So Marquez by decision. Popular. Marquez by decision plus 650. Boy, oh boy. Why don't I just bet the fight to go the distance? A plus 400. I mean, there's no chance that Reese wins the decision? Probably not. Yeah, we'll try it. Marquez by decision plus 650 for 180. Okay, Bruno Fajaya versus Dustin Stolfitz. Okay, so if you want to get a job in my hedge fund, which you can, I mean, I'm not hiring anybody, but if you did want to apply for a job in my hedge fund, this is a perfect example of a fight that would be a a perfect fight to, to gauge whether I would want to hire you or not. So let me just tell you a couple of things. If you are going to recommend Bruno Fajaya in round one, you you don't get a job in my hedge fund. The other thing is that if you're going to recommend Stolzfitz late, you also don't get a job in my hedge fund. You want to know why? Because those two things are basically assured of happening by the Twitter public, by the Twitter space. Either Bruno Fajaya knocks Stolzfitz out early or Stolzfitz takes over and wins late or by decision, okay? You can't bet like that. In my in my very un in my humble opinion, okay, um, the only thing you could bet here and not be completely overvalued is something else. So that would be either Fajaya late, maybe round two or three, or maybe Stolzfitz early. And Stolzfitz early is just not happening for me. I wonder what Fajaya by decision is, just for funsies. Plus seven hundred. Well, let's look at this. If I can get better than plus 700 in round two, I'll take it. Otherwise, I'm going to play him by decision. So let's see. Uh, rounds, props, Fajaya round two plus 400. Nope. So we're going to play Fajaya, Bruno by decision for 180. You'd think I was kidding, right? When I said that I was going to lose every fight. Raul Rosas versus Ricky Tercios. This is a rebooked fight. And we again have kind of this just incredible, incredibly awful clash of styles here. You have Raul Rosas Jr. who is, you know, going to be going for nonstop takedowns. And Ricky Tercios, his takedown defense is really poor. However, I mean, Rosas did gas a couple of fights ago um, trying to overdo it. So slowly but sure, I'm going to see a little bit of steam with, with, with Tercios maybe, maybe kind of taking over the fight later if Rosas gasses. Ugh. But one, that I tell, one thing you can't bet is Rosas uh, by sub. Okay, Rosas by sub is, is what everybody's expecting. Tercios by decision. I I guess that's where they think he's going to win. 
So all you can do, if you really want to be Contreras, you can play Rosas by decision. I mean, Tercios inside, if you want to try that. Or if you want, maybe Rosas by, by KO. I mean, he did get a KO in his last fight. Let's take a look at those two odds. So let's just put it out there. Let's just say if Rosas by decision is longer than Rosas by KO, I think we're going to do it. Let's take a look. Rosas by KO is plus 650. Rosas by decision plus 180? Rosas by KO. Maybe get some ground and pound here. Rosas by KO plus 180. Uh, Dominic Reyes versus just Dustin Jacoby. This one I'm pretty pretty confident in. So you have Dominic Reyes. Since his fight with John Jones, he's done nothing but go downhill. Um, he he gets he's getting finished, and then he got finished by like a jab, I think, by uh, Ryan Span. He's just basically dusted, and and D Dustin Jacoby's a very very solid kickboxer. Uh, tough fight in his last one against Menafield, lost by decision, I think, but he did get a KO over Kennedy and Jukui, I guess I pronounce it the the fight before. So it's probably going to be kind of a boring striking battle with with Dustin Jacoby kind of getting there. So there's two things you could do if you want. I mean, you could play this fight to finish or you could play Dominic Reyes just to win. Or the other thing, if you really wanted to get super contrarian, how about Dominic Reyes inside the distance? Now, that'd be pretty disgusting if we could pull that off, right? Let's take a look at some of these odds here just for, the, just for fun. Uh, let's see, Dominic Reyes... Inside the distance is plus 350. That seems actually really, really stingy, which means it's probably a good bet. Um, let's look at some of these others. Like Jacoby by KO. I mean, that's terrible. Plus 110. Is that for real? No, I'm not, we're not doing that. What about just what about Reyes by decision? That's plus 550. Boy. Let's take a look. Let's let's take a look at his results. It's gonna be it's gonna be something with Reyes here. That's for sure. Let's see. Um, Chinny, he's done. All the things we like we like about fighters we want to bet on. Well, you have to go way back to see if he did anything. Oh my God, Chris Weidman. He did get a split versus Vulcan Ozdemir. He did get a he get, did get a decision over in Saint Pru. He did get a decision back like ten years ago or something like that. So he can get a decision. All right, we're going to try it. Dominus Reyes by decision plus the 180. Yeah, we are so losing every one of these fights. But we're here for it. Okay, so we've already... We've placed 12. There's going to be a 13th, right? The 13th is going to be that Gomes by decision. It's going to be probably plus 350. So before we get to the main event, let's just review. Remember and, and Family Feud when you know they had the uh, the fast money, and then after the first contestant finished, they would bring the second one out. The second one would say, they would always say, let's remind everybody of the wonderful answers that your partner gave to us. So we're going to remind ourselves of the atrocious bets that we've made so far that we're going to have to make our money back with. So we start off with Puha Tomar with a complete style clash, where she's going to have no chance to win and stop the takedowns. So we're going to lose that. But if not, we get plus 270. We have Cody Stamen and Taylor Lapolis in what's, what's certainly going to be the most boring fight on the card. So why not bet it to go to, to finish plus 240? Uh, Sexy Mexi against a guy who almost lost to Daniel, uh, to Davey Grant with the fraudulent record. I don't know. We're going to, we're going to do the anti-fraud. So Marcos minus the 120. Uh, Jesse Butler is not UFC material. And Brad Katona, although he's mid, he's certainly going to win this fight. Well, he just doesn't have to win it every time. Maybe less than once every, maybe once every five or six times, Butler gets the job done. Uh, Andrew Lee against De La Rosa. De La Rosa 
is probably going to go for those takedowns. Well, good for us. Let her go for the takedowns and screw up, and then we can win by submission, plus 750. Charles Radke um, against Parates. Um, again, I, I, I have, it, I have a, a hankering to play him by sub, but we're just going to play him plus the 195. I was expecting him to get a little more steam, but people just really don't believe it, and and people are just really confident that Parates is, is the real deal. So we'll fade that. Uh, Klein by decision. This is a completely atrocious bet. I'm betting because I can't think of anything else to do. So I'm just uh, alerting you to that. And because of that, the MMA gods are very cruel. They'll they'll definitely have me lose some uh, some awful split decision here. Um, Baeza Soriano again. This is the one that's not really the greatest from con contrarian perspective, but we will bet it to go the distance. I think that's what's being uh, avoided the most. Plus two forty. So in this fight, the Marquez against uh, Reese fight, the only thing people are sure of is that this fight is finishing really, really quickly. So we are going to play this thing to go to a decision. I really do have a good mind to just play the fight to make go decision to plus 400. But we are playing Julian Marquez to win by decision, specifically plus 650. Again, this, this one is the uh, higher for my hedge fund play. You can't play Bruno Fajaya. And by in round one and show up my Discord. You can't play Stolfitz round two, three, or decision and show up in my Discord. The only thing you can play is one of these two things: either Ferreira by decision, or if you want to play Stolfitz early, you could try that. But um, I think this this I think this bet is clear: Ferreira by decision plus seven hundred. Rosas by TKO KO. The only thing that bothers me about this is he did get a KO in his last fight, so I wonder if there's a little bit of 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 that line in this but aside from that uh i'm down with this one rosas plus the 650 and reyes is done he's finished he's toast jacoby's too technical um so we are going to play reyes to win by decision of course plus 550 so we got to make all that back along with the gomes by decision which ha also has no chance so how are we going to get all this back so we're gonna be over 13 so we got to get at least what 14 to 1 i guess so we have Jared Kanir against Nasertin Imov Imovov. And I think I already know what I have to do here. So remember, we have to reverse engineer it. So we have to have something that's 14 to 1. And unfortunately, it's a very closely lined fight. So for us to get a 14 to 1 shot home, it's got to be a very rare, um, only a couple of things you could do. Okay. And a couple of them do fit what what uh, how we're going to analyze this fight. So Cannoneer, even though he's turning 40, all I'm hearing is that it doesn't matter with him. That in his last fight, he was amazing. He has incredible volume. Um, and I've also heard conspiracy theories that since Yasada left or whatever, that that the over 35 fighters have actually been doing much better, uh, implying certain things, which I don't want to imply. And it, this is right in everybody's mind. Like Cannoneer just beating the crap out of his last opponent. Uh, and... So I do think that Cannoneer is is the real public side. I don't think that I could play Cannoneer in this fight. The only way I could do it is if I played him in really legitimately in a specific round, which is probably what I have to do anyway to um to uh to get 14-1 or maybe something like Cannoneer by submission. So we'll hold off on that for a minute. So Imovov, the Imovov side I actually think is going to be the side that that is, I don't say ignored, but it's certainly the less sexy side to play. And the thing is, is that what most people are presuming is that Imovov is going to win kind of a, a well-paced, you know, well-paced decision. So I think what we have to do is either, you know, pick the right, you know, line or the right round or the right method with Cannoneer or do the same thing with Imovov, with Imovov finishing. Um, now, as far as how Imovov could finish, the good thing is I think he could do it either way. I mean, I did I saw him finish Edmonds uh Shabazian uh live actually um at Madison Square Garden. So we could do that. I know we can get KOs, so we're we kind of not limited to what we can do there. So let's just take a look and we have to reverse engineer this and see what we can do. Let's first just again look at when you just look at the regular rounds. I mean you could certainly pick your right round here, but let's just see. Um if we went to the round props. I mean, you could actually, if I play Cannoneer in pretty much any round, that's going to be good enough. Matter of fact, so funny. I thought he, I would think that, that Cannoneer would have a little more upside. I thought he'd be bet a little bit more. But anyway, uh, 
Imavov again. I could pick, you know, round three. That certainly makes sense. Round four, round five. Can't play him by decision. Can't play Cannoneer by decision. But let me just see, just, just for fun, what – I don't think it's going to be enough, but what is he by submission? It's probably not going to be enough, right? Yeah. So there's a couple of things we could do. We could play Imavov in a particular round, and specifically, like, probably an early round – because, well, it doesn't necessarily have to be an early round, but people are expecting kind of a boring result. I could play him of all by, by submission, but that's not enough. So what we can do is pick an actual round and an actual method. So if you play him of all by sub in one of these rounds, um, this is a huge, huge price. Like Imovov by sub in round three, like for example, is plus 40 to one. I mean, uh, to put that in perspective, if you bet this fight to go to a draw, it's it's 50 to one. Boy, this is probably too much. Why don't we just play him in round three? That's probably good enough, right? It's plus 14 to one right on the number. Um, I know you guys are rooting for me to do the 40 to one, aren't you? You're just saying there's click it, just click it, Eric, because then when he knocks him out in round three, I'm going to go on tilt. Imovov round three sub plus 40 to one. Do I have it in me? I, I'm not going to split this up. You know what's happening, right? You know this is happening. You know I'm clicking this. I mean, I can even play my KO in round three, plus 20 to one. All right. You, you knew it was coming. Plus 40 to one for 180. We're in. Good luck with, you know, all of that, as they like to say. So hopefully I win enough money in DFS to make up for all this because this is this is definitely let's put it this way. I'm trying to teach you guys how to think, and it's costing me a lot of money to do it. So I hope you guys appreciate that. In any case, uh good luck, everybody. And uh watch for our uh DFS lineup construction video either later tonight or tomorrow morning, where we come up with ways to win the hundred thousand on DraftKings. Good luck, everybody.